I have found a camera that is fun to use, has an addictive shutter sound, and maybe the greatest digital sensor ever produced. And no, it's not the X100 or the X100B. So I'm talking about the Fuji X-E1 and I'm not the first person to talk about this camera. I know that, but I do feel like it doesn't get enough love living in the shadow of the original X-Pro1 camera. So my partner and I have been shooting this camera a lot, both with Fujifilm lenses and manual lenses. And I have a lot of photos I'm really fond of to share with you. And I want to go through the pros and cons of the X-E1. So if all of the hype around the X100 has got you trigger happy to get into the Fujifilm system, definitely stick around to hear about this camera before you do make a purchase. So I was lent an original X100 by a friend and I was really excited to use this camera because like you, I watched that GX Ace video and I was seriously considering buying one of these. To be completely honest, I really did not gel with this camera. I wasn't really getting the images that I wanted and it just wasn't what I expected. Admittedly, I didn't give it a huge go and it probably was down to a lot of me rather than the actual camera, but I was surprised at kind of how much I didn't enjoy using it. The images kind of looked really flat straight out of camera and I had a few other issues like I thought I would really love the optical viewfinder as I'm a film photographer, but I really didn't like it. I found it really distracting with the frame lines and I'm not sure if that's down to like parallax error or whatever, but I just didn't enjoy my experience with the original X100. So to add to this, around the same time I borrowed the original X100, I was sent this XE1 all the way from Hawaii. Shout out to you, Patrick Kelly, for sending me this. Thank you so much. It came in a box with a bunch of other Chinese lenses that are actually really awesome. I have honestly had the best holidays and best summer shooting with this camera. So thank you so much for sending it. That was really generous of you. All right. So why do I love the Fuji X-E1 so much more than the uber-hyped X100 or the Fujifilm X-T4 that we already own. Let's look at the pros first and then we'll get to the cons later on in the video. So it's no secret that the X-Pro1 gets heavily romanticized for its sensor that is often referred to as being the most film-like in the digital realm. But the X-E1 actually has the same sensor. I think the term film-like or filmic film look is getting thrown around a lot lately as we are all in hot pursuit of something that can produce those film-like colors and tones without the cost of it. But in this instance, I would say that this sensor really does have a film-like look. So I am not a big fan of editing or doing anything in post. And that's one of the big reasons that I shoot film. My lab, Ikigai Film Lab, shout out to you guys, just do such a great job. I don't need to touch the images at all. And that saves me a bunch of time. I want that same thing from digital. I don't want to have to jump in Lightroom or spend hours trying to make it look like my film shots. And with this X-C1, the photos just looked so good straight out of camera. So that made me really happy. We did play around with some recipes and settings a little bit just so that they could get looking as best as possible straight out of camera. And whilst there has been a little bit of slight editing on some of the shots, most of them are just straight out of camera and look really good. I was super happy with them. I especially liked the look of the ProNeg High simulation. I think that's the best one that I have seen so far. The black and white film sims look really great too, but I do think that of a range of them that I've seen in different cameras, I just think black and white is a lot easier to replicate in that film kind of realm and always looks more believable. All right, so let's talk lenses. So with this camera, you really are getting the best of both worlds. You can obviously put any Fuji lens on there and they are really incredible, but you can also adapt vintage lenses, which kind of goes with that film look vibe. And then obviously you can put 
third party manual lenses on it as well, which is great. We can put all of our M42 mount lenses and Nikon lenses on this camera. So it just really opens up the opportunity for creativity and different looks and like changing up the vibe. Vintage lenses are already really popular, but I think that paired with film simulations just create that warm, fuzzy, like nostalgic, really nice film look that everybody is after without the cost. So far, I have tried four different lenses with this camera, which is a lot more than I would normally do. So this cute little pancake lens really makes it such a compact, like carryable camera, kind of similar in size to the X100. But now that I'm holding both of them, this X100 is definitely a lot heavier than the XE1. So I also tried this TT Artisans 35 1.4 lens that Patrick sent with the camera and it was very cool. Kind of looks a little bit like a Leica on the camera if you squint. This lens is more of a low light kind of like bokeh machine, which isn't really my bag, but my partner really enjoyed using this one. Some ASMR for you. So we also tried the Super Takuma 1.4, which normally lives on our Pentax Spotmatic. I don't really use this that much, but my partner has taken some amazing photos with this lens and it looked really cool. Like you get that really vintage look, but it does add a bit of bulk to the camera. So it's not something I necessarily would do, but I think it's cool to have so many options with a camera. But the one that I enjoyed using the most, which is the one that you will probably be the least excited about, is the kit lens, the 18 to 55 millimeter that came with our X-T4. I loved that way more than any of these other lenses. So in Casey's video, in GX Ace's video, he talks about the X100 and how it has a fixed lens and how that makes you have to move around and be more considered and be more involved with the process because you have that fixed focal length. So it kind of makes you like a better or more considered photographer. And I really enjoyed what he was saying, but I'm sorry, I am a lazy bitch when it comes to photography and I just want the photo that I want now. And I absolutely love having a zoom. So the shutter sound on this camera is so addictive. It just makes you want to keep taking photographs. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I just absolutely loved it. I could really like feel myself taking the photo and it just sounded really cool. I am not a fan of leaf shutters. I know that street photographers like them because they're like more discreet, but I am not here for that. I want to know that I took the photo and I want to hear it. Oh, sounds so good. So the X-Pro One gets all of the attention with its legendary sensor and its street cred. And I know it has a hybrid viewfinder, but using the X100, I just knew that the OVF was not for me. When you actually look on paper, the XE1 has a better EVF than the X Pro 1. And this is really important if you are adapting manual lenses. If you know me, you know that I am not here for the techs and specs kind of review. I'm more about what it's like to actually use the camera. But I just thought that was worth mentioning as maybe some of you don't know, Lux was doing some research and he found that out. So the XE1 only has an EVF and for me, that's totally fine because that's all I want to use. But that's something that maybe you as a photographer would like to consider if you have kind of a preference to one or the other, or you want to be able to switch from either. I just found the EVF just way better for me, which surprised me. Like I said earlier, that there was no distractions with like the frame lines and stuff. And I just felt like it was a lot easier to compose. What I was seeing was going edge to edge in the viewfinder. And for me, that was a lot easier for me to kind of be like, okay, this is my photo. That's just how I feel. I have used OVFs in my other digital cameras like the Canon G2, which I have a video on if you want to check that out. But I knew that I wasn't going to get exactly what I was seeing and I was happy to just kind of do a little crop in post, which is sometimes what I do when I shoot with point and shoots. But it didn't feel quite as distracting with that as it did with the X100. So other than having an amazing shutter sound, this camera also just looks really, really cool and just very enthusiast. And I just kind of loved like being seen with it. I know that sounds really weird, but it just made me feel really cool. And I think another thing that GXA says is like a camera that you think is cool and you want to take out with you will be the best camera for you because then you are going to pick it up and use it. Pretty much every time I was out shooting with this and we went out for coffee and put it on the table or we were just walking around, someone would ask me about it or just say like, that's a really cool camera. And I was all like, oh, thanks. So I would say it's also a great 
conversation starter. I mean, like a lot of cameras, but it's just another plus. I think with this pancake lens and like the size of it and the weight, it would make a really great travel camera. If you do have any kind of trip planned in the near future, I know you are probably planning what cameras you will be taking and what kind of work you're going to want to capture and create while you're on that trip. My family and I have a trip coming up in 2024 that we are really excited for. So I have been getting prepped and ready watching this course on Skillshare by Dan Rubin, who I am sure you have all heard of called Travel Photography, Seeing, Shooting and Editing. In this course, Dan covers smartphone photography, mirrorless or DSLR cameras, and my favorite film cameras. So there really is something for every photographer in this course. And I think Dan is really great in his approach to photography. It's very practical and varied. And he kind of says like, sometimes you will be out just with your iPhone and he gives you tips on how to like up your photography with that and get the shots that you want, even just with your iPhone. So Dan gives you a blueprint of five shots that you can attempt to capture on your trip. And he runs through how to get these shots and also how to edit them if that's your thing. This course got me so excited to plan my trip. And I think even if you are heading for a drive somewhere, you can use these principles to capture your surroundings and really nail those five types of shots that Dan talks about. If you aren't planning a trip anytime soon, don't worry, there are plenty of courses on Skillshare for you to explore your next passion or hobby or level up your side hustle or business. With Skillshare, you can really invest in yourself in this new year and level up and learn some new skills and take some time out for you. You can access what's on offer over at Skillshare at your own pace and ad free too, so there's no distractions. So if you want to try out Dan Rubin's course or the thousands of other courses on an array of subjects and topics over at Skillshare, then Hit the link in the description to get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium and start exploring your creativity today. I have pinned the link in the comment section below as well if you want to try out Dan Rubin's course. Okay, so now I've said enough good things about the XC1, let's get into the cons. So I shot this camera both in the day and in the night and I noticed when I was night shooting it did kind of struggle with white balance a little bit. That was easily fixed with like settings and color temperature, but it is something definitely worth noting. It did tend to overexpose a little bit, but you can compensate that with the exposure dial. So I have heard a few other people say that it's really easy to bump this exposure dial on the corner, um, which it is definitely, but we got this little like thumb rest thing which kind of looks like an advanced lever. It looks really cool. Um, I'll link it below if, if you want to check it out. And that definitely stopped that from happening. So pretty easy fix. One of the buttons on the back of the camera was set to adjust ISO and I accidentally bumped it at some point and put it up to like ISO like 5 million and ruined like all of the shots that I was taking. I didn't look at the back of the screen because I was doing the whole like film experience with the digital camera thing. Um, obviously, if I looked, I would have known, but we just disabled that feature and it then didn't happen again. So not a huge deal, probably more of a user error than the camera. With the EVF on the XE1, you can tell that it's a pretty early iteration of the technology, um, but I don't have too much to compare it to, but if you've been using like, you know, the best and the greatest latest digital cameras, it might not be for you, but then maybe my channel's not for you if that's how you're shooting. <laughs> I found it quite challenging to manually focus in lower light conditions. I felt like it was really hard to see and I was like really squinting, um, but I just use the autofocus. And for somebody like me who just shoots mostly still kind of scenes, I'm not shooting like sport photography or much that's sort of moving around. The autofocus was a little bit slow, but it didn't really bother me for my kind of style of photography. If you are interested in some of the custom recipes that we used while we were shooting this camera, um, I will be sharing them in my free weekly newsletter, Love Lucy. I will link it in the description if you want to sign up. It goes out every week and you'll get those recipes as well. So pretty much anybody can jump on Google or YouTube and look up the specs of a camera and have someone explain to you like in detail comparing them, telling you everything that you need to know about it. And I think that's great, but I'm here to just tell you what it was like from my experience using the camera, how it made me feel, how the photos made me feel, how did they look, you know, what the whole experience was like, because for me, that's what photography is all about. 